Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. From around the corner to around the world. Welcome to Nightline, a program that cares for you. A program that lifts up the name of Jesus through testimonies, songs of praise, and special programs. Our prayer partners are standing by to receive your call. And now, here's your Nightline hosts. Hey, I'm Don Perry Thompson. As you heard the man say, I'm your Nightline host for the evening. And I'm glad to be here. Sorry I missed you last week, but, you know, we got a lot coming up and uh, a lot of preparations. I hope Roy uh, Porter treated you right. I know he did, and uh, he's a real good guy. But I'm glad to be back tonight. Uh, i got a couple of announcements to make before I introduce my co-host. I'm excited about my co-host and our guest tonight. Got a good program, so you don't want to go anywhere except to call your friends and neighbors and tell them to tune in to Channel 16 tonight. A um, couple of announcements, though. We got a new phone system in, and so if you've been trying to call during the daytime or, or at night and you get hung up on accidentally, we're still learning the phone systems. And if you try to call me, I haven't even set up my voicemail yet, so uh, just leave a message. I will return your call. But if you got hung up on, I know a couple of people have, uh, just call back, and uh, it's not that we don't want to talk to you, that's for sure. Uh, speaking of phones, we can always use new, new prayer partners. Uh, I know we got about eight of them in there tonight. And let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven of them tonight. But I spoke to a, a lady today, and her, uh, her and her husband was retired. Her husband was retired from pastoring, and they're looking for a ministry to do. And uh, so that's what, you know, that is a ministry, and it's a good ministry. You will be blessed. I know we got a lady out there tonight. Um, I think this is her second or third week. And she led a 20-year-old boy to the uh, to the Lord the other week. Isn't that something? Amen. First salvation she's ever led somebody Amen. to How on the you? phone back there. So uh, it's a good ministry, and uh, you will be blessed by it. So uh, I got a list of announcements. Just bear with me here. As, uh, you remember, we're going to Bulgaria on the 27th of June. That's next Wednesday. And uh, we'll be gone for almost two weeks. Uh, Betty Cornett's already over there. She got there last week. Uh, Betty and Tina who y'all met a couple weeks ago. And uh, so we're going to spend time over there with the children and uh, try to get some people saved, get some lives changed in Bulgaria. Mm -hmm. um, but so far to date, you have helped us send 780 kids to the summer camp. And that's something to be proud of. Mm -hmm. But it's not too late to make our goal of 1,000. So if you want to, you know, go to the phone and uh, make that commitment. Or, you know, if a lot of y'all got the bus pass in the mail, uh, just send that back to us. That's what it is. Just clip it off and I'll get those kids on the bus. And I uh, want to mention that uh, July 7th is our prayer vigil, our monthly prayer vigil. And that'll be right here. I'll still be in Bulgaria. So that'll give you something to pray about. <laughs> uh, that'll be from 1030 to 430 right here at Channel 16 Studios. And uh, if you need any information, there's the number on the screen. Or if you're a, uh, I mentioned to that, the lady I was talking to about coming on and being a prayer partner with us. And I mentioned this ministry to her. Um, you know, her, her husband's a retired pastor. Uh, we'd love to have him or any of you retired pastors or active pastors come out and minister during that six Amen. hours. And uh, if you need more information, just call the station and we'll get that to you. One more announcement, I promise. I'm going to introduce <laughs> our guests and our co-host. Um, but I want to welcome back Christy Nodon. She had her baby, Claire Brooks, seven weeks ago. And she's back tonight. And she hasn't had separation anxiety yet of the baby. Um, she has had Heath, her husband, sent her a couple of pictures of the baby. It's a gorgeous baby. And uh, we're all excited for you. Congratulations, Christy. Um, but our guest, I think that's all my announcements. That's half the show right there. But our, our guest tonight are Edward Surratt, and he's a, a motivational speaker and a life coach and a pastor. And I don't know where he finds the time to do all that, but he does it. And then we got Reverend Dennis Smith of the Greater New Hope Christian Outreach Center in Simpsonville and Nancy Sanders of the Greater New Hope Christian Outreach Center in uh, Gaffney. Is that right? Gaffney and Simpsonville? Sounds good. But my uh, co-host tonight, he was on 
Uh, what were you on last year, earlier this uh, year? I think close to a year ago now. As a guest, and yes, uh, you were then Pastor Jeffrey Hicks. Yeah. Now you're Evangelist Jeffrey yeah, Hicks, yeah. and soon to be Daddy. Yeah, we're very excited about that. <laughs> September. Congratulations. Yeah. Your wife's seven months pregnant. Seven months pregnant with our first child, a baby boy. So, real excited about that. That's well, I can't tell you much about boys. I don't have one yet, but I got a little girl due in about five weeks. And uh, I, was, I was telling your wife earlier, and your, your baby's name was going to be Jonah. Jonah. And uh, I was telling your wife that we got about a list that long for boy names, <laughs> but we cannot come up with a thing for girl names. <laughs> so if you have a girl name in mind, call the prayer partners. We need all the help we can get at this point. <laughs> but uh, uh, Jeffrey, welcome to Nightline. Well, it's good to I'm be glad here. Glad to have you Glad here. to be here. Excited about the show. Yeah, it's going to be a good show. Yeah. I mean, we got some great guests, some good music. I didn't mention our music. We have Brandon yeah. Hart on as our singer. All right. And, uh, so uh, he's going to be blessed uh, with music. But uh, share with us what the, what the Lord's been doing in your life. Um, you, you left pastoring to start evangelism. And uh, tell us about that. Uh, well, the Lord's been moving. We uh, have not stopped since the beginning of February. We went back into full-time evangelism and uh, have traveled all throughout the southeast, mainly uh, in the states more toward Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, and those areas. Uh -huh. and, uh, for some reason, the people up in Appalachian Mountains enjoy uh, calling on us, and we always love going up there, yeah. but uh, seeing God do a lot of things. There's actually a revival going on right now on south of Meridian, Mississippi, that's been going on since the beginning of March. Wow. And uh, several of the pastors, no matter what denomination, have been getting baptized in the Spirit, a lot of conversions, and so that's what it's all about. It's not that's really good. about a denomination thing. It's about lifting up Jesus, and right. so uh, that's really what we've been seeing is just the body of Christ coming together and being the church again. And before, that's impressive since March because before the program, we were talking about revivals. Right. And we're going to have a tent revival here at the station, hopefully in the first part of September, and we're going to shoot for three days. And, you know, that's we're shooting for that because yeah. it's kind of hard to even do that. But since March, that's impressive. Yeah. That's, that's definitely the Lord. And it wasn't an evangelist thing. It was a God thing. Mm -hmm. we're, we've left since the beginning of, uh, or since we left in March, and it's still going on. So that shows it wasn't based on a man. That's right. And uh, it's the people of God just coming together and just focusing on the Lord and doing the Great Commission. And so... Uh, that's what's exciting, and for people to come out that long is definitely mm -hmm. a God thing, especially after the evangelist has packed up and done several revivals since then. Right. But to hear those reports of people getting healed and saved and, and so on is a, an awesome thing. We give God the glory for that. Well, that's no wonderful. Doubt. Very excited about that. Now, uh, uh, Jeffrey, I've never pastored, and I've never been an evangelist. Tell us what the, uh, in, in your opinion or your experience, which one do you enjoy? Which one do you prefer? And what's the difference? I know that besides traveling, oh, yeah. but you know, there's it's still a great calling. Yeah, there's a, there's a major difference because there's there's one thing to be the people shepherd, mm -hmm. but it's another thing to be the evangelist and come up under the pastor. And um, I know for us, the Lord allowed some things and a great training period for my wife and I for us to be what we're called in the first place. Mm -hmm. God took us through a season of pastor and had a great church and a great group of people there and uh, appreciated that time with them. But I believe the Lord allowed us to pastor, to become a pastor's evangelist, mm -hmm. to be able to come in and see the people revive, to come behind the pastor and follow his vision. Because, you know, who are you going to call at 2 o'clock in the morning? You're not going to call the evangelist. Right. You're going to call the pastor, and that's who the people have got to get behind and follow that shepherd. And so right. there's just a big difference in those five services you may be with them and those 365 that's days right. a year that you're with them. And you're not and carrying them. And you know? for a pastor, it's day or night. I know with my oh, dad, yeah. uh, he had a, a lady one time about 4 o'clock in the morning knock on his door. And this was back in the 50s before everybody had a car. And they went into the hospitals every block, you know, like we have now. And uh, she was going into labor and had to, he had to take her to the hospital. And so he took my, my mother's car. <laughs> and so... He, it, it, when he came back, you know, my mother said, why did you take my car? You know? <laughs> and so he, he was clever enough, you know, not to say I didn't want to mess mine up, but he said, yours has heat. He's <laughs> so, a wise man then, wasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> but why don't you share what the uh, scripture is for tonight? It's one of my favorite scriptures. It is a very great scripture. Now, it's Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 7, and we all know it well. It's trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not to your own understanding, and all your ways acknowledge him. And he shall direct our paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Mm -hmm. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. And yeah. that's pretty obvious why that's a very uh, familiar passage of Scripture because we find great hope and comfort in that, especially right. in the time that we're living in. That we, it's not about 
our ability or our wisdom. It's about seeing the Lord for who He is. Isaiah said, I saw the Lord and He was high and lifted up. That's right. And His train was filled with the temple. And so uh, and, and it's great comfort in that to me. Uh, you're 25, 26. 26. I'm 26. Old, and But we realize at our young age that <laughs> No matter how old we get, we're always going to have to trust in the Lord. Amen. That will never right. be, and, and I learned that from my father. He died at 82, mm. and he always had to trust in the Lord. Yeah. He never once could trust in man, because yeah. man will fail you every time. Amen to that. You know, but it's a wonderful scripture. But um, like I said, we got a great sh uh, show tonight. Oh, yeah. Um, share with us real quick. Just something that's on your heart before we go to music. Just anything. Oh, well, I'll put you on the spot. Oh, that's all right. There. Uh, there's a reason you got to be instant in season, out of season, right? That's it. Uh, well, that's, it goes kind of along with this scripture. I was kind of thinking about this scripture today. Mary said when she was promised that, Messiah, that she would conceive and have a son, and he would be the son of the highest, when she was going to conceive that miracle conception, the birth mm -hmm. of Jesus wasn't the miracle, it was the conception. Mm -hmm. and he said it would be the, his name will be called Emmanuel, God is with us. And she answered the, the angel, she said, how shall this be? And she said, the angel answered to her and said, the Holy Ghost will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. And so I think about this with this scripture because she said I have no man so how's this going to happen right. and I think our world's living in time they're scratching their heads saying how are my bills going to get paid mm -hmm. how's my family going to get saved how are we going to make it through such calamity and the Lord's saying I'm the Holy Ghost right. it's just not by might it's not by power but it's by his spirit so if we're saying tonight how's my family going to get saved or how are my kids going to turn around or how are my bills going to get paid it's not going to be by our ability That's we right. acknowledge not our ways but we acknowledge the Lord and we understand that the Holy Ghost is going to do a whole lot better job That's right. uh, than, than we could ever do. I'd, I'd no, nothing personal, um, Jeffrey, but I'd hate to rely on you for, for oh, my no, life. Oh, yeah, hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. You know, and that's, that's the way You'd it should. You'd be in trouble. You know, <laughs> you know, but we can always trust in Him. We can always Amen. rely on Him. Yeah, right. And it doesn't matter how far we get off from Him, how far we deviate from His plan, He'll always forgive us and accept Thank us Lord. back. Thank you, Lord. So, Jeffrey, will you pray over the program before we go to music? Yeah, let's invite the presence of the Lord. Father, we love you. We thank you tonight, God, that if we have a how, you have a Holy Ghost. We thank you, Lord, that right now we can pray to you, and we come to you in Jesus' name, and we invite your presence, we invite your anointing. Father, you know the needs of your people tonight. And Father, you, we know according to your word that you're going to supply all our needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. And we thank you right now in advance for the lives that are going to be changed. Father, we pray that your love will go across these airwaves into hotel rooms and homes, God, and bring hope and comfort to a lost and dying world. We love you. We bless you and we welcome you in this house tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Go to the phones. We want to hear from you. We want to pray with you. we got prayer partners standing by. Numbers there on the screen. It's been that number for almost 40 years, 244-1616. Uh, or you can give us your, uh, your prayer request or... Um, on, on, online now. You can email it. You just go to WGGS16.com. There's a prayer request form. And there's some literature on there you can download and read too. But right now we're going to go to music uh, from Brandon Hart. And he's going to be singing a patriotic melody.
Brandon Hart, he'll be here all night blessing us with that guitar. And uh, he's just a wonderful young man. So, uh, but uh, be sure, like I said before, with the music, go to the phones and call in with your uh, prayer requests or uh, praise reports or anything. Or if you have any questions for our co-host or any of our guests, or even for me, you know, if you want to know why I'm not wearing a jacket tonight, and <laughs> I tell you, sometimes I worry about that kind of stuff. But uh, anyway, joining us now is Pastor Edward L. Surratt. Thank you, and welcome to Nightline. Let it be here. Let it be here. Good. Um, now you wear a lot of hats. You're a mov first. You're a pastor. That's a, that's a two full time jobs in my opinion. Uh, then you're a motivational speaker, a coach, a mentor, a husband, a father, and the list is and, and a husband's and you know and a father. That's just <laughs> a, it's on plane in itself. How do you do it all? To God be the glory. Amen. That's it. Amen. It's, I mean, it's, it's easy. You just got to know how to balance your time. Yeah. And you got to have a supportive wife. And so when, you, when you're able to balance your time and have a supportive wife, everything else just falls into place. Now, it's not that easy, but things do fall into place. Mm -hmm. But having a wife who's there, uh, who's supporting you and right beside you, that makes things a lot easier. Yeah. So because she understands that every role that I, that I, that I do, so right. that's a lot easier. My wife understands she's not always, you know, happy, but she <laughs> understands. And uh, so it's good. Um, but which came first, pastoring or, oh, or speaking? <laughs> well, you got to understand there's a difference. Not all pastors are good speakers, mm -hmm. okay? That's a big difference. But I've been speaking. I, I mean, I spoke before. I, yeah, speaking came first because I was speaking in nonprofit schools. I mean, speaking for nonprofits, speaking in schools, different, different organizations. And then the call into ministry came later. Mm -hmm. and, so, and then the professional, speaking on professional level, just happened two years ago. Okay. And so, uh, you know, so it, that, that transition had to happen, but everything falls into place according to how God wants it to do. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, as y'all know, when I when I talk about a pastor, I don't talk about the guy that's up there on Sunday morning. We talk about like you were saying, the shepherd of right. the flock. Right. He's the one that's taking care of all those people. And like I did, like I said about my father, even right. taking them to have a baby at four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> it's more to being a pastor than just a speaker. Yeah, like because yeah. you, you know a lot of people get up and preach, mm -hmm. yeah. but being a pastor, you you know you have to, right. you're on call. I mean, you're on call twenty four hours a day, mm -hmm. and you know people say, well, you're a full time pastor. Regardless if I have a business or not, I'm still a full-time yeah, pastor. Right. 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 Because if someone needs me at 2 o'clock in the morning, I'm going to go. Right. If someone yeah. needs me at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, I'm going to go. Right. So, and that's, that's pastoring. And that's a learned process because yeah, you just sure. don't, you know, pastoring is, that's, that's a hard. Like I said, mm -hmm. preaching is easy. Come on, pastoring right. is the yeah. hard part. And a lot of people don't understand that. Yes, sir. Because like the pastor is full time. I mean, a um, few weeks ago, we had a family reunion, but I had to be somewhere with my church family. Mm -hmm. Pastoring. Yeah. You know, so you have you have to do those things, but having a supportive wife and having a great church family too. Uh, mm -hmm. I have you know my church family is awesome. You know, Metropolitan Amy Zion Church in Spartanburg, South Wonderful. Carolina. So, yeah. but you know, having a great church family that helps a lot too, mm -hmm. because they understand that you know I am bivocational. So right. they understand that I am doing other things other than waiting on them to call or back and forth up and down the road. So they understand those things. So you have you have, you have to have the total package mm -hmm. in order to be a good pastor. Amen. Now, I'm still learning. I'm still learning to be a good pastor because mm -hmm. I want to take my good to great. I want to be a great pastor. Yeah, and it, like I said, it's a process. It's a process. So, uh, But I enjoy it. I, I really enjoy it. I really enjoy Amen. it. Well, at what point in your life did you, you said you've been speaking for a while, but then doing it professionally for the last two and a half years or so. What point did you say, I want to do this professionally? Is And, and how did you get involved? Did you have a special mentor in your life and you looked up to him or her and said, look, I, I want to do what they're doing or, or what? How does that happen? Okay, uh, one of the greatest things, I've always wanted to speak professionally because I've always followed like Les Brown, Zig Ziglar, Brian mm -hmm. Tracy, you know, all these guys. I'm going like, wow, you know, mm -hmm. they're, they're standing in front of thousands and they're speaking and it was wonderful. But the greatest thing happened to me was when I lost my job. Mm -hmm. And people go, wait a minute, how can that be the greatest thing? Because that, make you, that, that made me stand up and say, okay, I need to do something with my life. Mm -hmm. And it was at that time I had a coach and mm -hmm. I had met this guy, uh, my, still my coach today, Kenston Griffin. Uh, just, you know, he travels around the world, do a lot of speaking. And, and he coached me to the level, I'm like, okay, this is what I want to do. And so he coached me into forming my own business. He coached me on how to speak. He coached me on uh, how to do workshop. He coached me on uh, how to, you know, just how to carry myself as a professional speaker. Mm -hmm. And then I had to learn, you know, where, uh, the name of my company is Edward L. Enterprises. 
So I had to learn where Edward L. stopped and Reverend Surratt began. Mm -hmm. Because it's two different people, right. two different, you know, right. and people go, well, how can they be two? If somebody called you at 2 a.m. wanting you to speak, in there, you wouldn't answer that call. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> but the point but now, to but ironically, ironically, yeah. ironically, you say that uh, because I do have some coaching clients that, you know, I am, you know, confidentiality mm -hmm. that they're called. Right. You know, and, you know, they're called at odd times because of who they are. Right. And so sometimes you have to be on call for for them. Uh -huh. So that's a difference. But right. that's not all the time. But because uh, they may be on the West Coast, they may be, you know, in China, they may be right. traveling or whatever. And they say, okay, I, I need my coach. So they'll call. And when I see the number, I was like, okay, I know who this is. Uh -huh. So, you know, but it's, it's rare because they try to, they respect my time and they respect who I am. Right. So. Let's talk about uh, the other end. I know you coach, but you have a coach. So you've yes. been coached too. Now, what do you call the person that's being coached too? <laughs> you know, that's what I'm, that's the word I'm trying to look for today. The person is being coached too. Yeah, yeah. Um, like I am a client. You're okay. I'm a, I'm a client. So I mean, being being a client because you have a coach still. Right. Um, is there any point that that you hear what your coach is saying, but you don't want to hear what he's saying? All the time. It gets hard. All the time. All the time. Because we get, I don't say we get, people get lazy. Yeah, you're uh -huh. right. People get lazy. And you get people get lazy, and people get in a comfort zone. And when you get in that comfort zone, it's like, okay, I, I, I know what's going on. I know how to do this. I can do that. But sometimes your coach will call you out of the blue and shock you into reality. And that makes mm -hmm. a good coach. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so even though I am, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm finished coaching with him, he's still my coach. You know, once a month we'll have a follow-up call. We may yeah. be on the phone for an hour, maybe an hour and a half. But once a month we're, we're coaching or even any, someone with this team because I have several coaches. So once a month, sometimes twice a month. We're calling check on one another. Right. So, but we, it's easy to get complacent, even in pastoring. Uh -huh. You can right. get complacent. You know, you think everybody loves you, and then you wake up one day, and, you know, not everybody loves you. <laughs> <laughs> but to God be the glory, I have a great congregation, so I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know with, like you were saying, with the ministry here with the station, I know if we're standing still, that's as good as going backwards. That's absolutely. We've got absolutely. to progress, and we've got to further God's kingdom. And we're only doing that by progressing, getting better, getting bigger, and getting our reach out there. And, um, you know, like I said, standing still is as good as going backwards. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing. People come to me for coaching. They say, well, I have this idea. And, and, and I have to be careful because coaching is not counseling. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's two different things. Right. Counseling, I'm helping you with a solution and getting, you know, getting better or whatever. But coaching is taking the good and taking the good and getting it to great. Mm -hmm. It's like every athlete, if you think about it, I use the analogy of athletics, Every athlete has a coach. Right. You right. know, LeBron James has a coach. Right. Dwayne Wade has a coach. You know, Michael Jordan, one of the greatest basketball players, right. he had a coach. And so these athletes, they have a coach to help them get to the next level of yeah. greatness. So what a coach does is it, it extracts that, that greatness out of you. And that's what I do. I extract that greatness that, that's out of you. But I, as I told you earlier, you have to be committed. I mean, mm -hmm. you just don't come to me and say, I want to get to the next level. Yeah. Can right. you help me? You, you got to have a plan. You right. got to have a plan. And that's why you say you take the good and make it great. Absolutely. You don't take the lazy and make it yeah. great or the non-committed and make it great. Absolutely. You've got to start committed and you got to be at least so halfway there on your own or, or, or partially there. Am I right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Some people come to me, they, they have a blueprint and they say, well, this is, this is where I am. And I see that commitment level that they want to get to the next level. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at their blueprint. I'm like, okay, I can work with these people because now we got to narrow it down. They may have 20 things on the list, and we'll start narrowing it down, narrowing it down until their most important three things. Mm -hmm. And then you get to the most important three things, you narrow it down to that one thing mm -hmm. that they're looking for, and you build on that, build on that. And you'll find people going like, wow, this is what I want to do. This is how I want to go. This is where I want to uh, take my life. You know, right. this is where I want to, you know, my next level. So I, I work with a lot of people. So it's, it's fascinating. It's yeah. kind of challenge them to change them. Absolutely. A bit. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But like That's I said, awesome. they got to they be committed. And that commitment has to turn into a conviction. Yeah. That commitment has to turn into a conviction because you, you can be committed to doing something, but then there's a burning desire that's yes, on sir. the inside of you. Like being in church, yeah, that burning right. desires on the inside yeah. of you that make you want to change your ways. Yeah. So it's the same principle. You got to change your ways. Say, I want to get to the next level, and I got to be convicted enough to get to that next yeah. level. But I don't know how to do it. That's where a coach comes in him handy. So I, I help them get to the next level. That's well, a do you, coaching and preaching. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, do, do you see a limit on greatness? No. You, will somebody get to a point no, and say, "I'm no, the best no, I'll ever no, be. No, I'm going to no. stop here." There's never a limit on greatness. 
Never a limit on greatness. Mm -hmm. yeah. Never a limit on greatness. The limit is the limit is within you. You yeah. can limit yourself. Right. And you know, and I learned um, a hard lesson because one of uh, it was doing a revival, and a uh, uh, apostle told me he said, "You're committing the greatest sin." And I was going like the greatest sin. He was like, "Yes." And the greatest sin was I was limiting God. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And when you limit God, that's a sin. Right. right. Because if you believe what the Bible says and believe what everything says, you know, you never stop. I mean, it, you yeah, know, he, right. he's a God of abundant blessings. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. So I want my abundant blessings. Yeah, you yeah. Know? yeah. But some people just get comfortable and this is all they want. You know, right. and you don't have a need for a coach if you're just in a comfort zone. Well, I've been there, Pastor, because I, I'm comfortable. I think I'm doing the will of God. And then he calls you to do something oh, else. Yeah, absolutely. And you say, no, no, I'm doing enough over here. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Right. But then you're miserable, I'll tell you what. And then it eats at you until you finally, and, it, and what you need to learn to do is just not, you know, avoid that situation entirely. You know, and like, and, and but, coaching is not for everyone because, mm -hmm. you know, like I so said, some people are in a comfort zone. Right. And that's, you know, that's where they want to be. That's fine. You know, that's, that's you. But if you're striving to get to the next level, yeah. you just you can't stop. Mm -hmm. You've got to continue, continue to learn, continue to grow, continue to be that which God has called you to be. Right. Well, at what point do you think somebody's ready for a coach? Or, or, or for that matter, also let's make this two parts, and then ready to coach? Wow. Someone's ready for a coach when they realize that their dreams aren't becoming reality. Mm -hmm. When you are dreaming and you have goals and you don't know how to make those goals and dreams a reality and you're, you know, hitting a brick wall, so to speak, you need a coach. Yeah. You need a coach. That, that's that's mm -hmm. when a coach steps in, okay, I'm taking your dreams and we're going to take them to the next level. When, when somebody seeks out a coach and they're to that level and uh, what should they be looking for? Should they be prayerful about it? Or should they just go out and just open the yellow pages and see <laughs> Edward L's number in there? Go to my website. <laughs> go to my website. <laughs> just look at my website. Everything's on there. But you, you said one key word is being prayerful. Uh -huh. And in everything that I do, in everything that I do, prayer is essential. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's just a way of life. So prayer is essential. But you want to look for someone who's, who has, uh, who's credible, mm -hmm. who has uh, been certified as a coach mm -hmm. you know so I am a certified what we call peak performance coach mm -hmm. you know life coach but it's called a certified peak performance coach so you want to see somebody who's certified and someone who can produce you know uh, people you've worked with or uh, you, you, they want, you want to make sure they have a business mm -hmm. you don't want you don't, not just a business card but they need to have a business right. right and it has to be a business to where let me see your website because uh -huh. I run into a lot of people who are coaches I'm like where's your website uh, well uh, well no don't don't uh, no so there has to be, you know, it has to be someone who's credible and it has to be a professional. Okay. It has to be a professional. Like I said, you know, pastoring, counseling is not coaching. Right. right. Counseling, like I can counsel you all day long and try to soothe you, soothe you, but that's not going to help you get to the next level in what coaching would do. Okay. So. Now, what, what is the difference? And we'll get back to the, we know what it takes to be a coach as far as when you're ready to be a coach. But what's the difference between uh, a coach and a mentor? I personally, I have a mentor. And yeah. if he likes it or not, he's my mentor. I told him that yeah, too. Yeah. And then he's guided me through things, and he's helped me through things, and he helped me see all angles of things. Right. And he's beneficial. But um, but what's the difference between a coach and a mentor? Well, you just said it. Your your mentor is guiding you. He's helping you. A coach is guiding, helping, but taking you, mm -hmm. okay. helping you achieve the next level. As I, I mentor kids. I mentor. I mean, I love working with youth. I mentor a lot of young men. I'm helping them along. They can call me. I'm helping them. Helping them. Helping them. But when it's time for them to get to the next level, Coach Surratt comes out, Edward L. comes yeah, out, right. and then I'm coaching them because now I'm, t I'm extracting that greatness out of them. And when you extract that greatness out of them, now they're on a level of reaching success. They're on a level, on a path to achieve success. Yeah. So it's, it's a thin line, but a mentor is, you know, a lot of mentors volunteer. I mean, just keep right. it real. Uh -huh. you know. But I take coaching seriously because my reputation is built on your success. Right. You know, if I can help you be successful as a whatever business or whatever person you're trying to uh, become, that makes me look good as a coach. Right. But as a mentor, yeah, I'm there for somebody. I'm, you can call me. I'm going to be, I'm coming to the school with you and everything. And there's some, there's some coaching involved with that, but it's not as intense. Okay. So. Well, I know part of growing and part of getting successful or getting to wherever your goal is, 
and at least for me, is learning my, my failures and yeah. how to avoid failure in the in the future. If you find somebody that they're they're constantly doing something and you're constantly telling them no and you know the right way to do something, do you at that point after numerous times of saying no, don't do this this way, do you let them fail on their own so they learn, you know, because that, that's a big part of, you know, I think yeah. as far as wow. growing. Do I let them fail on... To a point, not just out of the blue. Yeah, I don't want to, you know. But I, like I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't let them fail on their own, but as a coach. Because I know they need to learn. You right, know as, as a coach, you show them their mistakes. Because mm -hmm. oftentimes, people who are failing at what they're trying to achieve, they don't see their mistakes. Right. right. So as a coach, That's I true. will point out your mistakes. You know, it's almost like uh, you, you, you hit a home run, and you got to touch every base. If you miss second base and just go to third base, right. you're not going to score. Right. So as a coach, I have to tell you, excuse me, timeout, Dante, you missed second base. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But if I don't tell you, you're going to think, okay, well, I didn't hit a home run. I'm good to go. Right. And just using that analogy, I mean, we know, you know, but, but, and that's what a coach does. Point out your mistakes. Show you your mistakes. And then not only show you your mistakes, but show you why it's a mistake. Mm -hmm. If you don't touch second base, you're out. Your team doesn't score. Right. You may lose the game. You know, all those things that could happen. Mm -hmm. So a coach points out the mistakes, show you why it is a mistake, and then let's go back. Okay, now let's try this again. Wow. Now I'm giving you more strength. So the next time you come up to the plate, you hit a grand slam, okay, you're going to take your time, but you're going to hit every base. Mm -hmm. And by, hit, by touching every base, you're going to score the point. Yeah. yeah, that's a good thought. Real good thought. So, uh, we're going to go to music. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about coaching and then um, more about your speaking engagements, okay. what you do, who you'll speak to, <laughs> what you'll speak on. You know, but um, anyway, you're going to be blessed. We want to stick around to hear the rest of this. But right now, let's go to Brandon Hart, and he's going to be singing Returning Home. Thank you. 
Thank you, Brandon. Uh, but we're going to continue our uh, conversation with Pastor Surratt and uh, Edward L. You know, <laughs> we're, we're at the Edward L. part right now. We'll, we were at Pastor Surratt earlier. <laughs> but uh, uh, tell us, we've been talking about life coaches and, uh, you know, you've given uh, motivational speaking. We haven't talked about that a lot, but we're going to get to it. Okay. Um, but this life coaching thing is just so fascinating to me. Like I said, I've always had a, or recently have had a mentor, but I've never had somebody right. sit there and actually extract what, what's the good out of me, what little's in there. <laughs> but, um, you know, I bet somebody like you could find it, though, could you? Yes. <laughs> That's my job. That's my job. That's what I could, I would definitely find it. I would definitely find it, yes. We, we had uh, Cynthia, our producer, and, uh, you know, she's doing a wonderful job. And uh, But she asked us during the, pro, uh, during the, the and it, it, we're men, and we don't think like women, and that's right. fine. But she asked you if it is uh, kosher or acceptable or uh, pleasable or whatever the word uh, for a man to coach a woman or vice versa. It is. It is. Uh, because when, you're, when you reach a level of coaching an individual, you, re you have reached a level of professionalism. Mm -hmm. And so in, in your, your initial questionnaires that, you, that I ask my yeah. clients, It'll weed out any, you know, anything that's crazy, anything kind of funny. Right. So you ha you're you're at a level of professionalism where, if they don't feel comfortable with you, they wouldn't have called you. They would yeah. have called, you know. Yeah. So it's it's very, you know, it's very, you know. I think she used the word apropos mm -hmm. to work with females as a male or vice versa. But you know, even with that, you know, I work with you know individuals, uh, companies, organizations, uh, business, nonprofits. Yeah, right. So I mean, I work with you know everybody, you know, any and everybody, so to speak. But it is a, it is, you know, fine to work with, you know, females. Mm -hmm. Like I said, you, you, but you, you at a level of professionalism and you never forget that. Yeah. You never forget that. So. And when, like I said, mentioned earlier, when you, when you think you want to become a life coach or, or a motivational speaker, especially a life coach, because anybody can go out and speak and go home or yeah. something. But the life coach is more personal. It's one-on-one. -on -one. You said you even have clients call you in the middle of the night sometimes. Um, at what point do you, do you feel that, uh, you're ready, you know, or, or let's just use your personal life, for example. What point in your life did you feel you were ready to become a life coach? Wow. <laughs> was the there a point where you said, I think I'm ready, but then you backed out? Well, it was, was that okay, it was kind of, it was, for me, it was twofold because uh, I knew I wanted to be a professional speaker, professional yeah, motivational speaker. Uh -huh. I knew that. And when I was being coached on uh, skills on professionally speaking professionally it went into coaching mm -hmm. okay because my coach who was coaching me on speaking he said now we're gonna we're gonna shift a little bit I'm not gonna teach you how to coach people to mm -hmm. success mm -hmm. and you go like okay so that's how the coaching aspect came it was just kind of a twofold but uh, you know that that's that's the way that happened it was just you know you you you, you at a point where this desire is burning inside of me right that I want to, you know, I, I yes, got sir. to, it has to birth, it has to come out. Mm -hmm. And so while that was being birthed, something else was being birthed as well. Yeah. So now it's a motivational speaker as well as, you know, coach. Of the two, which one do you prefer? Wow. <laughs> that's, that's not an easy question. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer. I, it's not as easy as A or B. <laughs> Can we go to a commercial? <laughs> I, I love speaking. I, I love being a motivational speaker because you're really, um, Coaching, a lot of my coaching is one-on-one, -on -one. Mm -hmm. and I, I have done corporate coaching or organizations, but uh, speaking, because you're in front of either 100 people or thousands of people, so I like speaking because you're able to interact right. with, with the audience. Mm -hmm. I can't ask, that's, my, that's like the pastor coming out to me, too. So. Right. And that's all right. So you're, you're, you're able he's to He's in there somewhere. He's in there somewhere, <laughs> but he can't come out when I'm speaking. So. But I, I love speaking. I love the motivational speaking, uh, the topical speaking, or even the inspirational speaking. Mm -hmm. So uh, the speaking, I guess, would be the best part because you're, you're able to go in and, you know, just move a crowd. You're yeah, able to yeah, go in and just yeah. inspire people to, right. to, you know, like, wow, you know. And then when you leave, you know, they got, you, you're getting emails and phone calls. You know, that was awesome. Right. I'm like, yeah, it was. To yeah. God be the glory. So, I, you know. I, I know I got a friend, and he does motivational speaking. And uh, he shared with me an email recently. He was so happy that, you know, he's getting to somebody. He's reaching somebody. He's touching somebody. And he's making them, you know, aware. Right. Or, or, or they're learning from him speaking. And I can imagine that's just you know, it's so rewarding. You it, know? Is, it is, it and is. And just like on here, when you get on here and you get these prayer requests or somebody, you know, something you said have changed or, right. or, or you know, changed somebody. And, so, and, and, so and one of the things you have to, uh, you know, going back to the professionalism, there has to be something that you, 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 you 
deposit into people. Mm -hmm. You know, just like preaching. Right. You have to make a deposit into people. And with me, it's all about attitude. Mm -hmm. And a lot, you know, a, a lot of my speeches, a lot of when I'm speaking, it comes back to attitude. Because my motto is, your altitude will have no ending yeah. if your attitude has a positive beginning. That's good. Mm -hmm. So I speak a lot about attitude. And so, you know, a lot of people say, you're the attitude adjuster. Okay, if you want to call me that, <laughs> fine. But, you know, you, you have to have something to where when you walk into a crowd, you walk into a room, they know you, okay, that's, that's the attitude right. man, you know, it's right. attitude man. So. Growing up, my, my mother had a paddle that said attitude adjuster. <laughs> 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 but uh, Ed, when you when let's let's shift kind of into the motivational speaker, okay. um, Edward L. And you know, if you're going to get up there and speak about something, you speak on a wide range of topics. I speak know. on anything from A to Z. <laughs> <laughs> and, but you have the experience to back it up. Absolutely. You know, tell us about some of that experience. You know, kind of where you've come from. You know, to to actually be. Wow. You know, I could, I could get up there and speak about something I have no idea about, but that don't make it right, you know. <laughs> right. But you, you got the experience to back it up. Well, you, you, it's not so much as, as experience backing it up. Or knowledge. Knowledge. Yeah. Hmm. You know, you know, I would say knowledge is powerful. That's true, but there's something more powerful than knowledge, and that's applied knowledge. Mm -hmm. So if I don't apply my knowledge, you know, it's just that's knowledge. Good. Like I said, it's, you know, and people say, well, knowledge is power, knowledge is power. And I say, well, there's something stronger than knowledge. Right. Mm -hmm. Something more powerful. What is power? Applied knowledge, right. you know, so uh, applying the knowledge, you know, I can speak on nuclear physicists and don't have any idea what that is. Mm -hmm. But if someone called me to speak on that topic, I will do my research. Mm -hmm. You may, and what people misunderstand, you may see a 30 minute speech, but you don't see the hours of preparation that it took. Right. For that 30 minutes, just right. like preaching, you just people like say, preach. "Well, you, you only preach 20 minutes, and they're gonna." I'm like, but you don't see what God, you know, how right. I prepared for that. So, and and just like preaching, and y'all know this, oh, yeah. um, it's not it, it's just words to an audience until the the convers uh, uh, your your people apply it and right. apply Absolutely. that and actually you know use that and implement it in their day to day life. And you have to know your audience, and that's that's one of the key factors. You know, you, you have to know when you're when you when I get called to a speaking engagement. Right. I have an outline. I mean, I'll send the whoever you know whoever contact me. I'll send them my sheet. Okay, this is what I need to know. Who am I speaking to? You know everything. Mm -hmm. So I need to know who my audience is because mm -hmm. I can't go and speak to an audience of doctors, and I'm speaking on a third grade level. Right. And I can't go to a, a high school. Yeah. You know, speaking to twelfth graders, and I'm talking on a PhD level. Right. So you have to know your audience, and that's key. That's Do key. you ever find it hard though to become re relevant? to those two extremes that's two extremes in third grade and then you got a, a doctor you know a when you're a doctor <laughs> but i know it with preaching you know each church has its personality right. or a different culture and paul said become all things all people and sometimes it is hard you may preach the same sermon you know 1200 miles away and god bring that back to you to preach right. is, do you find it hard to even a motivational speaking to, to to do that at times it's not hard it's and, and the reason it's not hard because i get i've been trained right i say so when and you you and you find out you'll have I'm giving a secret away. You have five good, you have a uh, total maybe five speeches. And you can go in and tweak those speeches and they'll sound different to uh -huh. each audience. Mm -hmm. You may have an audience, you may have an audience, and there may be five different audiences. And I can use one speech and it'll sound like a totally different speech each time. Mm -hmm. So it's not hard right. if someone lets me know who the audience is that I'm speaking right. to. Right. And that now, it has been before. Well, they didn't send me the information back, and I'm, you know, you, you how do you prepare? <laughs> Prayer. <laughs> you have to pray yeah. and make sure you are, you know, you're attacking the issues or the points that they want you to attack. So. Okay. What's one of your favorite audiences? I know you're passionate about teens. Um, I, I love teens. I, I love working with teens. I love working with youth, period. But I, I love working with teens because I believe that they do shape our future. They oh, do shape right. our tomorrow. They are so if future, we don't right? reach back and help them or help uh, guide them, you know, what, what is that saying about our tomorrow? Mm -hmm. So I love working with the teens on all aspects. I mean, I, I love working with teens. Yeah. What, what's some of the, you know, we talked about, I said you cover a wide variety of subjects from, from wow. you know, Christianity to, you know, whatever, um, from A to Z, like you said. But what's one of your most, more favorite, you know, what do you enjoy? I know you probably enjoy speaking on all of it, but what is your most enjoyable uh, subject. <laughs> I want to know. <laughs> stop, look, listen. Stop, look, listen. Mm -hmm. Stop, look, or stop, look, listen, or stop, 
no, revise, revamp, no, stop, look, and revamp, something like that. Because I, I change them up in a time, but it's, mm -hmm. it's basically stop, look, and listen. And, uh, you know, stop what you're doing, look at what you're doing, listen. Yeah. And so you got to make a change once you listen. So uh, I, I use that one a lot, stop, look, and listen. Wonderful. So, but I mean, there's there's a there's a bunch of them that I use, but that's one of my favorites. You put me on the spot with that one. <laughs> well, in in that you could you could even use from anything from marriage. Oh yeah, I mean to, that's, to that's, that's why it's my favorite. That's why it's my favorite. <laughs> you can tweak I can tweak right? that, and it'll fit yeah. every audience that calls right. me. <laughs> right. I like that. You're a smart man. <laughs> Speaking of smart, how important is education, not only in your job but to your audience as well? Wow. Okay, to my job, education. Is. Education is important, don't get me wrong. Do you find yourself still continuing to learn? You, uh, always, always. I'm, I'm either attending seminars, webinars, reading books, or you know, I'm, I'm there. I'm, I'm always doing those things. Mm -hmm. And then I help out other companies that I you know, work with, and we're doing seminars, webinars, and you know, teleseminars, and things of that nature. So I'm always learning, always learning. And that's what I try to instill in every audience, well, especially the young people. Continue to learn continue to learn. Now I realize that every, every young person is not college material, mm -hmm. but that does, not, that does not mean that they can't continue to learn. So I, I, I try to let them know, continue to learn, and all that you do learn. Because education is big for me, mm -hmm. but right. you know, learning, learning, learning. Because you have to, you know, the Bible says study to show thyself approved, right? right? right. So if I'm not showing myself approved, I haven't studied. Right. Right. So, you know, I use that, and like I said, but learning is very, very essential. Yeah. Very essential. Well, you talk about, <clears throat> and I'm trying to get back to my, I was telling them during the music, I'm trying to be a better host and stick to my, my list of uh, questions here. But you talk about webinars, seminars and stuff. Um, you know, so you talk, I know social media is big oh, yes. right now. Oh, yes. What is your view on social media? If you're not using social media, you are in a time zone, a time mm -hmm. warp or something. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of the companies that I work with, one of my companies that I work with is called uh, Vision, BDS, it's V-Y-Z-I-O-N, Business Development Services. And what we do, we help churches, help organizations, help people get more involved in social media, mm -hmm. uh, especially the churches. That's one of the, my biggest areas, churches and nonprofits. We help churches build websites. And I often tell people, you know, it's part of coaching too. Mm -hmm. we, we coach them on, uh, on the social media. Mm -hmm. And I have found out that we have a lot of churches who have an eight-track mentality <laughs> But we're living in the iPod world. Right. Yeah, and true. so how can you yeah. reach people? And your mentality is still back in 1976. <laughs> right. And so yeah. you coach churches again. You know, you're coaching them. Let's get to the next level, churches. Yeah. You know, so actually this is real big. Social media is, is very big. Social media is very big. And it's free. Absolutely. In most of the cases, you know, Facebook, and we're on Facebook, so like us or friend us or whatever you do on there. Um, yeah, Facebook, Twitter, you know. And, and, and we're, and we're thinking things. about getting into Twitter, but with a lot of that, you gotta have, you got to be committed to it because yeah. it's got to be updated almost daily, if not twice or three times a day because people will lose interest in it. Absolutely. But it is a good thing. Um, the Internet is a wonderful thing. Like right now, we're streaming. And you, you, anybody, any of your clients worldwide can watch you right now. I, I, I did put it out and there. And you should have so. tweeted it. <laughs> <laughs> I did put it out there, so hopefully they are watching. And, you know, I'll have some emails when I when I get through. So uh, I know my family in New Jersey, they should be watching. So hopefully. Wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> so, but we uh, just got a few more minutes in this hour. and uh, But I want to come back for just a few minutes after okay. the second hour. Um, sometimes time just gets away when you're having fun. Um, but... Uh, um, it's been a great hour, I think. Oh, yeah. But, um, yeah. How much time we got? Three minutes. Oh, we have more time than I thought. <laughs> okay. And television, three minutes is a lot of time. So, uh, um, and now I've lost my thought. Help me out here, somebody. <laughs> well, I know Cynthia was talking about uh, coaching in churches. Yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and that's, 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 a big, that's a big one. Uh, first, the church has to be, you know, committed and uh, And so, so even on, a, on a church level, you've got to be to that, that point of good. You can't be mediocre or not even ready to accept help at, even on a church-wide level. Well, just like an individual level. You, you need to be, but churches are a special group of people uh -huh. right? because you're dealing with a whole lot of different personalities. Yeah, true. Yeah. And so you have to have a group of committed people to say, okay, how do we get the church to the next level? Right. How do we, uh, you know, or even just advance one step. Right. Because a lot of times with churches, it's one step. It may be a baby step, but yeah. it's one step. Oh, uh, that's in so the right you, direction. Right, you got your right direction. So, 
And uh, I think I used the analogy earlier, earlier of how, uh, you know, the Bible says, enter into the gates with thanksgiving yeah. mm -hmm. and into the courts with praise. So in, co in, church, in coaching churches, I take them from the gate right. to the court. To the court. From the gate to the court, because there's there's there are so many gate Christians, yeah, you know, and the gate Christians say, "Lord, help me pay my car payment." Okay, but God is wanting to bless you with even more. He wants to pay the car off, but all you're concerned about is getting me a car payment. Right. Right. So you're stuck at the gate. But when you have those Christians who are at the court, there's the ones at the court say, "Lord, okay, you paying my house off, you paying my car off, right. by paying my child's education because I'm giving you praise now. Uh -huh. I'm giving, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful." But now I'm going, my thankfulness is turning into a praise. So now I'm giving you praise. And my praise, yeah. I'm coming out of my situation. I'm coming out of debt. I'm coming out of all this mess that I'm into. Now I'm in the court. Mm -hmm. And yeah. if I get a church to the court praising God, yeah. watch out. Hey, come oh, on, Pastor. Pastor. Oh, <laughs> I'm trying, I'm is this trying Pastor to... Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> that was Pastor Sorrent. I'm that's sorry. That's a different office. Yeah. That was a different office. Yeah, but, right. I mean, but, but you got you look yeah. at it, though. I mean, you, you think about how many churches, I mean, just going through the, the rudimentary things that Sunday in and Sunday out. Right. But if you get to that court and start giving God praise while you're in the yeah, court, yeah. Right. you can imagine. I mean, this uh, evangelist said you know, they set up uh, uh, something back in March, and it's still going on. Yeah. They're in the court. They're in the yeah. court. If they were at the gate, they would have ended when they left. Right. Yeah, but they're right. at the court. Yeah. And when you're at the court, things continue to happen in his name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. not Hicks didn't do it. Hicks, right? That right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, Hicks didn't do it. But there, it's done in God's name. Right. So you get people to the courts giving God praise. Watch God work things out. Watch God make things happen. Watch God just turn your, you know, uh, you know, your size, in, your, your size into joy. Just watch yeah. him. Watch him do all these things. Yeah. And that's what coaching churches do. That's right. what I do with coaching churches. Take them to the court. Well, we're out of time this hour. Sit tight. We're going to be back for a few more minutes after the break. So don't go away. Uh, we'll be right back.